In the past few years, there's been talk in the heavy metal community about a band called Threaten. Though at a first glance, this act seems to be a run-of-the-mill group of headbangers, there's a far more outlandish story hidden below the surface about Threaten's rise to notoriety, including accusations that the band is a bogus vanity project. Observers have alleged that the eponymous lead singer Jared Threaten spun an elaborate web of lies to try and fake his way to popularity, culminating in a European tour that famously saw Jared playing to multiple empty venues. Today on Anomaly, we're setting out to get to the bottom of this story and figure out if there's any method behind the madness of Jared Threaten. Jared Eames was born September 11th, 1989, in the small town of Moberly, Missouri. His website bio states that he taught himself to play guitar at the age of 10, then several other instruments shortly after that. Details about his backstory are few and far between, but we know Jared bombed around here and there for a few years playing at several small Midwestern establishments as a teenager. Rolling Stone magazine suggests that Jared always wanted out of his sleepy Missouri town, and that he was inspired to pursue metal thanks to influence from his older brother Scott and their father. So when Jared was a teenager, it's no surprise that he did what so many others at his age attempt to do at one point or another, form a rock band. Jared got the chance to stretch his musical wings in high school when he and Scott formed a heavy metal band called Satith. Employing gimmicks like pentagram iconography and drinking fake blood, Jared began to obsess over his newfound hobby, to the point where Scott says he even showed up to family functions dressed like a metalhead. Rolling Stone described their relationship as increasingly fractured, even likening it to the sibling rivalry that tore apart the Gallagher brothers of Oasis. Comparing their musical talent, Jared once boasted, quote, I always knew that I was better. Yet family ties forced the brothers to plow ahead despite their obvious differences. And in 2007, Satith released their first EP, titled Decaying Heads of the Holy. Jared says he had an epiphany after coughing up a sink full of blood in his early 20s, scaring him into reconsidering his simple life. At the same time, conflict was brewing with Scott over who was credited as the guitarist of Satith. Apparently, Jared went behind his back and changed numerous details on the band's Facebook page to make himself the focus. After that, the two were no longer on speaking terms. In the meantime, Jared enjoyed a brief stint in the heavy metal band Abigail Williams, with Ken Sorceron confirming he spent just a week in the group. The brush with mortality compelled Jared to leave his humble Missouri town for the glitz and glamour of California, where he was certain he could make it as a rock star. So, in 2012, he packed up his life and moved along with his girlfriend Kelsey to LA. Over the next year, it seems Kelsey supported the couple while Jared focused on his musical career, building an impressive catalog of over 70 songs. Apparently, he poured over $10,000 into the production process, which he says he amassed from a frugal lifestyle rather than relying on an inheritance. Taking cues from his favorite stars like Alice Cooper, Jared reinvented himself with a bombastic alter ego. From here on out, his stage name would now be Jared Threaten. His mission, as recounted to Rolling Stone magazine, was to quote, do what it takes to try to bring rock back into the spotlight. Jared's identity wouldn't be the only thing he stretched the limits of truth with, however, as now he was plotting his coup of the modern music industry. After nearly half a decade in progress, Jared was finally ready to bring Threaten to the next level with the release of his EP, Breaking the World. He played every instrument used on the album himself, a testament to his wide range of musical talent. For promotion, Jared had a music video produced of his single Living Is Dying, bringing his love of 1980s hair metal to a worldwide audience. Soon, he was posting videos to his social media of what appeared to be himself playing before large crowds, though sharp-eyed viewers determined that the footage was spliced together with other, more popular concerts. The official Threaten website even bragged that Jared won Top Rock Artist of the Year but this was removed after it was discovered that the publication that supposedly awarded it didn't actually exist. While it's not unheard of for musicians to puff up their own accomplishments to attract a wider audience, Jared's further antics soon overshadowed any serious discussion about his talent. Of course, if Jared was to tour as threatened, he would need more than just himself covering all the instruments. Jared searched the web for the perfect musicians to round out his group, first coming upon guitarist Joe Prunera by way of his YouTube channel. 
Then, in a move that would soon become his calling card, Jared devised an alias as a talent agent named Lisa Golding, who supposedly represented a firm called Aligned Artist Management. In a message complimenting Joe's skill, Lisa extended an invitation for the guitarist to join an up-and-coming rock star on what would be an all-expenses-paid tour through Europe. Though he would only receive a flat rate of $300, the fact that the flight and boarding were to be covered convinced Joe that if nothing else, he'd at least get a free European vacation. He accepted Lisa's offer immediately, and then made the trip out to LA to audition. Though Lisa herself wasn't present, this didn't bother Joe as he found both Jared and his wife Kelsey most welcoming and by the end of the night, he was officially a member of Threaten's European tour. A drummer named Dane Davis and a bassist named Gavin Carney were recruited in similar fashion. At the same time, Jared went to work getting in touch with numerous prospective venues throughout Europe, using the same tactics that pulled in the three musicians who by now comprised Threaten. And so, over the next few weeks, the band would begin rehearsing for the opportunity of a lifetime, totally oblivious to the fiasco that was about to unfold. Reports of a heavy metal band playing at empty venues in Europe began circulating on music websites throughout 2018. According to the venue managers, they had been led to believe Threaten was a far more notable act than it really was thanks to an extensive campaign of fake internet profiles created to bolster the band's image. There was even a fake promoter called Stage Right Booking that was in touch with the venues to book shows. Press packages from Stage Right were deliberately misleading saying Jared's single topped the charts in seven countries and that his label was associated with bands like Motorhead. Additionally, Threaten's YouTube and Facebook pages seem to have been filled by fake and purchased subscribers and likes to imply there was a much larger fan base out there. To help build credibility, a slew of other fake bands were included in Stage Right Booking's listings to make them seem more legitimate. Moreover, other fake labels were put online sharing some of these fake bands, no doubt to make their presence seem more organic. Jared also seems to have been behind a fake news website called Top Rock Press, which featured stories about the biggest acts like Axl Rose. Some of the interviews the website claims to have conducted were ripped off of other news websites. About the affair, Metal Injection writes, quote, It's like this dude took the time to concoct this whole elaborate lie, but then kind of gave up halfway and just started copying and pasting things thinking nobody would notice. Of course, Threaten had virtually no presence in America when the European tour was booked, with all mentions online being traceable to either Jared or Kelsey. The other band members remained completely unaware of Jared's stunt and continued to practice for their first gig. Metal Injection wrote that although there were around 300 tickets said to have been sold to the first show in the United Kingdom, only three people seemed to show up to see them play at the Underworld in Camden. Still, Jared pushed on with the other venues, using fake Facebook accounts to bolster the number of hopeful attendees. A closer look revealed that most of these accounts were located in Brazil. Other times, Jared would use one of his eight burner cell phones to create profiles and pose as his own fans in the comments sections. As more venues experienced this strange phenomenon going on with Threaten, most were left scratching their heads at what exactly Jared's endgame was. A few directly called him out online, warning others of his deceit. While Jared had indeed paid most of these venues their booking fees, this wasn't good enough since most make their money from the bar. And as news spread of the hoax, some of the other venues Threaten was scheduled to play at cancelled and began offering refunds. Given that oftentimes Threaten wasn't the only act scheduled to play, some elected to open their doors for free to attendees. Naturally, Jared began to feel the heat from those he had duped. But while his curated Twitter fan club page went on the offensive, he and Kelsey otherwise dropped off the face of the earth in terms of online presence, for the time being. The big hoax began to unravel as words spread throughout the European music scene. It was soon revealed that moderators on Wikipedia had previously suspected something fishy was going on with Threaten, believing that his article was self-authored. This was partially because of the overly flowery description of Threaten's career, even saying Jared was, quote, one of the most influential figures in current rock music. It wasn't long before the information was changed to reflect the obvious deception. When moderators began looking into the situation, they found the Lisa Golding name attached to the user who had made the Wikipedia edits painting Threaten in a positive light, heavily implying that she was either Jared or Kelsey. This was more or less confirmed when a supposed image of Lisa on her Facebook page was discovered to be a stock photo of a woman in her 40s. 
But the people who felt burned the most by the experience were Jared's own musicians, who first learnt what was going on after reading about it on the internet in the middle of the so-called tour. The band members poured over the details of the last few weeks when everything began to make sense. Leading up to the ill-fated shows, the recruits stayed at the home of Jared and Kelsey, who never gave an air of anything being off. The trip itself was said to have been paid for by aligned artist management, though this money most likely came directly out of Jared's pocket. But as soon as they had flown overseas, everything seemed to change. Joe's suspicions were first triggered when he saw the size of venues compared to the crowds that Jared had promised. Joe expected packed shows of up to 1,500 people, but when the first sound checks were done, it was obvious that the buildings couldn't hold that many people. As well, Jared and Kelsey became increasingly erratic, not revealing much about themselves, but growing ever more irritable. In particular, Joe relates that the couple watched everyone like a hawk. Quote, They wanted to keep us close by and under wraps. One morning, the three of us went down to breakfast and then went next door to get groceries. And when we returned, we got yelled at for not knowing where we were and straying from the group. We were expected to keep close and for them to know where we were at all times. In London, we went to the shops in Camden, and we stuck together as a group. It would have been nice to be treated as an adult, be back here by a certain time. Kelsey was even said to have threatened to have their visas revoked by kicking them out of the band should they wander off again. She was also blamed for the curfew placed on the other band members, even on nights where they weren't playing. Another clincher was that the modest $300 payment each band member received wound up paying for their food and any additional expenses outside of the hotel and flight. By the time the band reached Ireland, the story had hit hard in the metal news cycle. Apparently, Jared blamed this incident on both his manager and his promoter, who, unbeknownst to the band, were in fact him and his wife. But the damage was already done. Guitarist Joe Pranera and drummer Dane Davis immediately quit the band, whereas bassist Gavin Carney remained, simply because he couldn't afford a flight home at the time. Jared didn't attempt to fight the band members' decisions to drop out. In the midst of this, Dane Davis uploaded a short video to his Facebook explaining how everything went down. None of this should have happened, and um, I just want, you know, first and foremost to let everyone know that uh, Joe, Gavin, and I uh, we had no idea. We were blindsided by uh, everything that came up on Friday. And um, Joe and Gavin are great people, uh, very talented musicians. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's shocking. And we're trying to wrap our heads around, you know, what happened. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions right now. Um, yeah, I, I myself have questions. I, I honestly, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's such, such a surreal, like, strange thing that, that has happened with this tour. Not long after the incident, Jared would break his silence with the following cryptic tweet. Quote, What is fake news? I turned an empty room into an international headline. If you are reading this, you are part of the illusion. But those following the story didn't fully accept that this was a calculated move, instead believing that Jared was trying to backtrack to make it seem like a masterstroke. Jared's brother Scott surfaced to give his take on the situation, explaining that the two hadn't spoken in over six years. Quote, all I can say is I'm disappointed in the choices my brother has made. With the current news shedding light on his real identity and our relation, and that we did have a band together in the past, I have to actively disassociate myself with his current actions. Scott went on to explain to Metal Sucks that a younger Jared would have scoffed at what he had become. He continued by saying his brother had evidently developed delusions of grandeur as an artist, never breaking character from his rock star alter ego. Scott even predicted Jared's response, quote, I know him well enough that he's going to try to turn this into it all being an elaborate hoax and that he was the mastermind of that too. Jared continued his elaborate scheme by talking to Rolling Stone and other news outlets to tell his side of the story. He insisted that this was all a publicity stunt, just as Scott said he would, 
and explained how he practiced so hard for the tour at home that he even injured himself to the point of requiring a wheelchair for a brief period. Jared regretted the vitriol that came his way from this unusual situation, hoping that onlookers would come around to seeing it as a necessary step in building his name as an artist. But few were convinced. One bartender from a venue Jared managed to play in England said, quote, He seems quite deluded and an extreme narcissist. Undaunted, Jared soon posted an open call for guitarists to join his next tour, with rather unusual criteria. Restrictions included not having a lazy eye, being someone who high-fives, being from Montana, and taping over a laptop webcam. Amongst other points, he said, quote, may or may not be a joke. In December, Jared spoke to the BBC and explained that it was always his intention to have the situation blow up, and that he was in fact the one who alerted media outlets to the bizarre situation. However, at least one website he says he forwarded the tip to claims they received no such email leading up to the scandal. Jared said that his plan was to become a villainous figure of rock and roll, something he felt had been missing in that music scene lately. Following their parting of ways, two ex-members of Threaten decided to take Jared to small claims court back in California. Because Jared and Kelsey failed to appear, the judgment defaulted to a win for the band members, who wanted money for both the flight home and for the expenses they incurred while believing they were on a legitimate tour. Both were awarded several thousand dollars in settlement. It seems that Jared and Kelsey simply ignored all attempts to reach them. Throughout 2019, Jared would try to capitalize on his infamy with a handful of interviews that he had hoped would portray him more favorably. These offered more questions than answers, but Jared believed this could help build his mystique. He affirmed that Threaten was him and him alone, and that the other band members who had since deserted him were but hired help picked to help better sell the illusion. Quote, I ended up hiring some low-level people that would effectively just stand there, hold instruments, and pose as a band. I knew we were playing to no one, so I wasn't particularly concerned with their musical abilities. He then told Ultimate Guitar, quote, my perfect lineup for live performances would be Jared Threaten clones on all instruments. Also in this interview, he talked up his newest bandmates and promised that he would have a new album called Infamous released sometime in 2020. As of September 2021, it still has yet to come out. Jared had even loftier plans in mind though, revealing, quote, I partnered with the Gotham Group, the producers of the Maze Runner films, to release a threatened documentary and a threatened feature-length scripted film as well. I will be coordinating my album release with the release of the first film. Jared also said he fabricated up to 10 more bands to use as window dressing for an upcoming media stunt, though much like the film and album, there remains little to show for this. In November 2019, one year after the disaster in Europe, Jared decided to return to the UK and try his hand at yet another tour. One Twitter user in the UK decided to check out the show and tweeted a play-by-play -play of everything that happened, noting that the few attendees seemed to be mostly journalists. Moreover, it seemed that by now Jared had embraced the moniker of fake band, and in a bizarre twist had a number of mannequins holding instruments joining his bandmates on stage. Only a handful in the audience stayed for the entire spectacle, which ended with Jared thrashing and smashing about before leaving the stage. The new decade has thus far been a quiet one for Jared Threaten, with neither his promised documentary or the accompanying album released as promised. Threaten's various social media accounts have also been uncharacteristically quiet, leading some to speculate he's either too busy working on content to keep up with them, or that he's moved on. His website still remains active, and Jared continues to promote a fan club for Threaten with the tongue-in-cheek name, The Illusion. No doubt another attempt at flipping the script of how his European tour went down. Overall, the Jared Threaten story is a classic case of an artist trying to fabricate social proof as a means of building clout in an industry, albeit with little success. And although there's no shortage of industry plants who use very similar tactics to gain fame and notoriety, most often these individuals are backed by teams of social media experts who know what they're doing and wisely use a feather touch to achieve their goals. Perhaps one day Jared will focus more on developing himself as a musician rather than a marketer and let any fan base of his grow organically rather than trying in vain to inflate the numbers.